Hello everyone, this is Orhan. In this video, I'm going to talk about chapter eight, which is about risk and rates of return. I start this chapter from a very basic premise that investors like returns and they dislike risk. So what is a risk? In finance, we define risk as the probability of earning low or negative actual return. So what is a return then? We define return as follows price of an asset at time t minus price of that same asset at t minus one which is pt minus one over pt minus one we basically divide the price difference to the previous price at t minus one t minus one meaning the price in the previous period it might be previous day it might be previous month or week depending on the text this phrase is equal to saying PT over PT minus one minus one. It's the same thing. So let me give an example. Assume that somebody bought an Apple stock for $200 yesterday. It means the price of Apple yesterday at T minus one is $200. And assume that the price of that Apple is $220 today. $220 and then the return is going to be let's follow this rule price at time t divided by price at time t minus one minus one so at time t the price is $220 divided by $200 minus one which is going to be 0.10 or 10 percent so 10 percent is going to be rate of return Okay. In finance, we have two types of data. The first one is called realized data. As you can understand from the name, realized data is the data that's already realized, that already happened. For example, Apple stock prices yesterday is a realized data. Historical stock prices are realized data. And then the second one is probabilistic data. Probabilistic data is the data which did not happen yet. So our, it's, it reflects our expectations about tomorrow about future for example i might be assuming that the apple stock price is going to be 250 dollars with 40 percent probability and it's going to be 300 dollars with 60 percent probability this is a probabilistic data it did not happen yet there are probabilities assigned to specific prices this is called probabilistic data let me give you an example of realized data so this is Apple stock prices between March 2016 and March 2017. So this graph reflects the stock price return intervals with the corresponding number of days. For example, there are 250 days last year, out of which 90 days are here. So this column is 90 days, more or less. I'm, I'm saying approximately. So this is 85 days. And let's say this is... Uh, 15 days so there are 90 days with returns between 1 percent and 2 percent and there has been 85 days with returns between negative 1 percent and 0 percent the other columns can be interpreted in the same way so this is apple it again shows the in return intervals with the corresponding number of days on the y-axis and these are the corresponding uh, statistics uh, related to Apple returns. As you can see, uh, the first one is the average of the returns for that year, it's 0.14. And then comes the other statistics, which I will define in a moment. Now, this is Bank of America. And then the red column shows the number of days with the corresponding return intervals. This table to the left shows the statistics of Bank of America returns too. So this is called return distribution. These are for realized data. If we don't have realized data, we don't have specific columns. Instead, I will use curves similar to blue or red one. So for probabilistic data, we have probable distribution, which lists all possible outcomes and the probability of each occurrence in a graph like blue or red one here to understand these graphs we need to define two things the first one is expected rate of return and the second one is a standard deviation so let's start with expected return expected return is the weighted average of return on a risky asset if the data is probabilistic then they are there are probabilities with the corresponding returns to illustrate, please take a look at this example. Assume that we have two stocks. The first one is StarSense and second one is JPOT. 
there are two states of economy. The first one is there might be a recession with 50% probability, and there might be a boom with 50% probability too. If there is a recession, then the return of star science is going to be 15%. And if there is a boom, the return of star science is going to be 40%. And then the same thing holds for JPOT, just the return is going to be 30% and 10% respectively. So what is the expected return of star sense? I'm going to multiply the first probability with the first outcome. So 50% times 15% plus 50% times 40%. So 50% times 40% plus 50% times 15%, it gives 28%. So this 28% is going to be expected return of star sense. So I'm expecting that star sense is going to yield 28% next year. And the same thing holds for JPOT. I'm going to multiply the first probability, 50%, with the first outcome for 30%. And the second probability, which is 50% again, times 10%. So I add those two numbers up, I get a return of 20%. So I'm expecting that next year, JPOT stat is going to yield 20%, but star sense is going to yield 28%. So this is called expected return. So I am expecting to get this return next year. So the next one is risk. So how can we measure risk? In finance, we generally use a statistics called variance or standard deviation. Well, once you calculate the variance, standard deviation is just square root of it. Variance is the summation of the terms which include probability times return minus expected return squared. So standard deviation or variance is a measure of how far the actual return is likely to deviate from the expected return. In other words, to calculate the variance, we have to calculate the expected return first. Now, let me show you how to calculate the standard deviation using an Excel sheet. I am doing the star sense example once again. I already calculated the expected returns in the previous slide. So to calculate the variance or standard deviation for probabilistic data, we need to use the expected return. So expected return is going to be subtracted by the actual return. So if recession happens, the return is going to be 40% minus what I expected. And here, 15% minus what I expected. So once you subtract this, you need to square this. It's going to be previous cell squared. Square is shift six in my keyboard. It might be a little different in yours, but the sign is this one. And then square the second one. So this one squared. So once you square those two, each squared item, so the first squared item, this one, must be multiplied with the corresponding probability. So I'm going to do it in the column H here. So click in this cell in column H, write equal first probability times the square. Hit enter and then do the same thing here. Second probability times this squared. So let's go back to our definition again. I subtracted expected return from each return and then I squared them and then I multiplied it by probability. I did this. And then the last thing I'm supposed to do is to sum those terms up. So I this is the probability times squared term. This is probability times squared term. Now I'm going to sum them up. So write sum, open the parentheses, and select these two cells. So it's going to be sum. So this is going to be the variance. Variance of star science company return is 1.57%. And the standard deviation is it's going to be square root of variance. So we need to use another command here, which is SQRT. SQRT takes the square root of any cell in Excel. So hit here, click the cell H9, close the parenthesis. It's going to be 12.51%. So once again, star sense is an expected return of 28%, which we calculated a moment ago, and a standard deviation of 12.51%.
So we calculate the standard deviation for star sense as 12.51%. If you do the same math for j part, it's going to be 10%. So we already calculated standard deviation for two companies. So let me summarize what we did up to now. So we assume that there is a company called star sense who has two possibility of returns, 15% return with 50% probability the y column is showing the probabilities 50 percent and there's 0.40 percent return with again 50 percent probability so this is probabilities and these are returns so this is star sense star sense and jpot can be shown similarly 10 percent return and 30 percent return each of which has a column of height 50% probability. So this probability is 50%. So this is JPOT. And we calculated their expected return as 28 and 20% respectively, and their standard deviation as 12.51% and 10% respectively. So bottom line is this, we have two stock return data with corresponding probabilities, and we calculated expected return and standard deviation for these two companies. Now let me show you how to calculate mean or in other words, average and standard deviation for realized data. So if you have realized data like historical stock prices of Apple and Boeing, then we can use an Excel sheet. This is a historical price data of Apple and Boeing. In column B and C, we have the price of Apple and Boeing. In column D and E, I'm going to calculate the return. So the Apple return is going to be price today divided by price yesterday minus one. This will give me return for Apple. And I'm going to drag it to the right and drop and then double click on this tiny little cell in the bottom right. Double click on it. So I would have the stock price returns for Apple and Boeing. So if you scroll down, you can use any empty cell to calculate the average and standard deviation for this data. So the average is going to be, to calculate the average, I'm going to use the average function, which is here open the parenthesis and select the whole column. You can click on the last cell and then use control, shift and up arrow to select the whole column and then close the parenthesis, which is going to be something like this, average in parenthesis from D5 to D2408. And it calculates the average return for Apple. If you drag it to the right, it calculates the same thing for Boeing. You can use STDEV function, to calculate the standard deviation for Apple return. Again, open a parenthesis, select the Apple return data, close the parenthesis, it will calculate, it will calculate the standard deviation for Apple's. And if you drag it to the right and drop, it will do the same thing for Boeing. Let's change this to percentage sign, increase decimals a little bit. So now I have the average data for both companies and I have standard deviation for both companies. Again, standard deviation is used to measure the standalone risk of individual stocks and individual investments. Let me shortly summarize what I did up to now. So we had two types of data, realized data or probabilistic data. In realized data, we can calculate mean and or average. They are the same thing. The corresponding thing in probabilistic data is expected return. Okay, expected return corresponds to average. And then we calculate standard deviation for both types of data to understand and to have an idea about the risk of a data. In probabilistic data, we have these kind of probability distributions. This is a, a curve, probability distribution curve. There might be different curves like this. The blue one is more tighter and the red one is more wider. The wider the probable distribution, the higher the standard deviation, meaning the higher the risk. The tighter the probable distribution, like in blue one, the lower the standard deviation, the lower the risk. The next question is, how can we combine standard deviation and risk so that the investor have an idea about what to invest? Well, luckily, we have another measure called coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation divides the standard deviation to the expected return so that the investor would have an idea of normalized risk. So this measure calculates the risk per return, not the standalone risk. So for example, in Apple case, the standard deviation was 1.2% and the average return was 0.14%.
And when we divide them to each other, we get 8.57%. This gives the coefficient of variation. So once you calculate the coefficient of variation for Bank of America too, then you would have an idea how to compare those two stocks. Now let's go back to our initial example. Remember in this example, we calculated the expected return and risks of two companies. Please pay attention here. The risk of Star Sands is higher than the risk of JPOT. But is it worth not to invest in Star Sands? Well, we can't know just because Star Sands give us a higher return for taking that risk. So the question is, is it worth or not? So let's calculate this coefficient of variation of Star Sands. So it is. 12.51 divided by 28%, which gives me 0.45. It is risk per unit return. And if we do the same thing for JPOT, it is the risk 10% divided by return gives me 0.50%, meaning that even though star cents standalone risk are higher than JPOT's risk, when we normalize them, when we calculate the risk per return, JPOT seems to be riskier than star cents. Up to here, we discussed only standalone risk and standalone expected return for single stocks. In the coming video, I will talk about the portfolio risk and portfolio expected return. See you in the next video.